On the 28th of November 2016, a young Russian-Canadian programmer posted an FAQ on sharding in a GitHub wiki and casually used the word trilemma for the first time in the context of blockchain and inadvertently kicked off a technological arms race in the battle for the supersonic future of crypto. That programmer was, of course, Vitalik Buterin. But what did he mean by trilemma? And what does it have to do with this? Yes, you're about to find out. Coming up, some spinning cake, intimacy with rubber, and a balloon gets wrecked. Oh, you are joking. But before we get started though, you know the drill. Decentralize the crap out of that like button, shard the subscribe button if that's what you're into. The comments on the last video show me we're making the kind of content you like. So please do help us grow the channel and do more of it. Okay, now back to business. Vitalik of course needs no introduction and it's slightly shocking when you consider he's still only 26. So let's look at this famous trilemma which defines three competing propositions. Decentralization, security, and scalability. And I say competing because each is battling for supremacy in what is very much seen as a zero-sum game. In game theory and economic theory, a zero-sum game is a mathematical representation of a situation in which each participant's gain or loss of utility is exactly balanced by the losses or gains of the utility of the other participants. If the total gains of the participants are added up and the total losses are subtracted, they will sum to zero. Thus, cutting a cake where taking a larger piece reduces the amount available for others as much as it increases the amount available for the taker, that is a zero-sum game if all participants value each unit of cake equally. And that's important. The word trilemma is, of course, just a clever, media-friendly variation of the word dilemma. So why don't we start there? Dilemma. What does that even mean? Well, if you're a filmmaker, or particularly if you're a screenwriter, then honestly, dilemmas are the gold at the foot of the rainbow. They are the linchpin of great drama. Great characters like Indiana Jones, Luke Skywalker, or Tony Stark are defined by the choices they make under pressure. Choices that we couldn't make because we're not heroes like them. Now a choice between good and evil isn't much of a choice, it's binary, it's pretty easy which one you pick. But a dilemma is a choice between the greater of two goods or the lesser of two evils. And if you want to understand what a great dilemma looks like on screen, then look no further than Brad Pitt, torn in half at the end of Seven when forced to choose between completing Kevin Spacey's design and becoming wrath, or allowing justice to take its course. That's what he wants. He, wa he wants you to shoot him. No! No! You tell me, you tell me. That's not true, that's not true. Become vengeance, dude. Nah, no, she's all right, you tell me. Become wrath. And this gets to the heart of it because dilemmas are inherently emotionally charged because they imply pain, they imply stress. There is no right answer, only compromise. Oh, God! A trilemma compounds this by adding a third component. Now, Vitalik wasn't the first to use the word trilemma either. If you've ever hired freelancers or any third-party contractors, you'll most likely have encountered the most common trilemma, cheap, fast, or good. You can pick two, you can't have all three. And nor is this the first trilemma we've seen in distributed systems. We can go back 20 years to 1998, when the Cap Theorem or Brewer's Theorem was first articulated. And it states that it's impossible for a distributed data store to simultaneously provide more than two out of the following three guarantees. Consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. What networking infrastructure and other CS experts have found is that some problems are technically impossible to solve. That's impossible! In a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network due to the constraints of liveliness, routing, and fault tolerance, you cannot simply scale a network by adding more nodes or speeding up communication between those nodes. You need more profound and, of course, complex solutions. So let's get into it. And we start with decentralization, which describes the ability of agents within a system to transact without the control or authorization of a third party. Decentralization should therefore guarantee censorship resistance. 
But for this to happen, three different types of agents need to work together. Users who want to conduct a transaction, validators who record and verify transactions according to the protocol's consensus mechanism, and programmers who vote and suggest modifications to the code base, defining the ongoing progression of the project. The more decentralized a network is, the harder it is for a single party to control it or take it down. Greater decentralization implies more participants, and the higher the number of participants, the higher the overall system fault tolerance and security. Which brings us neatly to the second pillar. To be truly considered secure, a crypto protocol needs to be resilient in the short term and immutable in the long term. In other words, the protocol needs to be able to prevent or recover from short-term attacks without making changes to previous states of the distributed ledger. The protocol throughput, which defines the number of transactions per second a network can handle, plays a major role in defining how resilient a protocol is against spam and TPS-based attacks. Such attacks are possible because decentralized network nodes tend to be asynchronous, meaning the higher the TPS, the longer it takes the information to arrive from one node to another. This time-lapse or propagation delay, also known as network latency, may increase the probability of orphan blocks. And as a result, the higher the protocol throughput, the higher the propagation delay, and of course, the higher the probability of attacks. So you can see the benefit of vastly increased throughput places massive strain on the security component. Scalability represents the capacity of a network to handle increased load over time. Network effects are pretty commonly understood these days, so projecting growth is generally factored into the design of any new network which leads to inevitable mockery when you have networks with massive capacity, but nobody's using them. Lonely, Mr. Lonely. However, the opposite is also true when networks that are not sufficiently equipped to deal with an increase in load collapse under the pressure, resulting in outsized transaction fees and a lot of delayed transactions. Which brings us to the point that if you're betting on blockchain, then you're betting on mass adoption bringing with it vastly increased volumes of users and transactions. So you're gonna need those fast pipes. You can't have one without the other. On the other hand, faster block times mean nodes are less fault tolerant. Higher throughput always means a higher probability of failure between nodes, and this is why we've seen a number of high-profile, high-speed chains compromise on decentralization with a minimal number of nodes or block producers. So everything is a delicately balanced set of trade-offs, and the penalty for getting it wrong can be Severe. No! So now let's return to Vitalik and those famous words he first wrote. This sounds like there's some kind of scalability trilemma at play. What is this trilemma and can we break through it? Now by posing the trilemma as an obstacle, he kind of framed it like a maths problem with a discoverable concrete solution. And in so doing, he inadvertently set the stage for a lot of admittedly very smart people to attempt to, well, solve it and raise a lot of money to do so. But the more time I spend in this space, the more I realize that this isn't really the case. Dilemmas are a state of stress, trilemmas even more so. It isn't a problem to be solved, but a condition to be managed. There is no right answer. It's stressful and it's painful. Because a trilemma is an emotional problem, not a maths one. But here's the thing, you can add a fourth component to the trilemma, making it, that's right, a quadrilemma. And no, I didn't make that up, it's a real word. I am of course talking about privacy, which creates yet another layer of stress and tension. As DeFi continues to grow, we'll see an increased push for what's known as auditable privacy. Breakthroughs and zero-knowledge proofs like Supersonic will allow users and financial services to prove one aspect of compliance without having to reveal all the underlying details. So uh, imagine an investment fund being able to prove that it's taking the correct management fee without needing to reveal details about its trades, investments, or investor identities. This can be extended to identity and reputation solutions that offer user data privacy via selective disclosure credentials, like insurance, for instance. So there's much to ponder here, and it's no wonder that even the brightest minds in cryptography have struggled with it. However, necessity is the mother of invention, and if adoption takes off and we see volume come in, then we are going to need to find a way to do it better, 
or the whole system will collapse. And on that note, all that remains for me to say is I hope you enjoyed this investigation into the stress of the trilemma. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you didn't like it, try watching it upside down. See you on the next one. Peace!